Here is a different way to look at a, an ice chart slash equilibrium problem. And this is actually a past AP exam question from maybe six, seven years ago. And I'm hoping we get a question like this this year because we're way overdue. So I'm hoping, hoping. Um, here we've got our balanced equation where we have two moles of sulfur trioxide at equilibrium forms two moles of sulfur dioxide and oxygen. And it says, a, after a three mole sample of SO3 is placed into an evacuated three liter container at 300 Kelvin, the reaction represented above occurs. The concentration of SO3 as a function of time is shown below. So we've got our three mole in three liters, which is what molarity? One, that's why we have a one here. So the molarity actually changes from 1.0 to something here, 0.4. Now, is this at equilibrium, the SO3? Yeah. yeah? And at what point does it get to equilibrium? Is it right here? 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 Yeah. So once you, if you see a problem like this on the test, uh, AP exam, it's really a good idea to indicate where the reaction establishes equilibrium. Why is that important? Or is it important? Actually, it is because once the reactants become at equilibrium, when do the products get to equilibrium? At the same exact time. So that's a reference point. So everything hits equilibrium at the same moment in time. It's not like, eh, the products are going to get to equilibrium. And then about two or three minutes later, the reactants will get to equilibrium. It's all at the same time. All right. So that's just some background information. I'll add that because I know the dot won't end up on the same spot. All right, so let's look at part A. It says write the expression for the equilibrium constant for the reaction. And so it's asking for K. Now, do we have pressures or concentrations for this? Concentrations. concentrations. So do we need parentheses or brackets? Brackets. Good. So products over reactants. What are the products? <coughs> SO2. Do we do anything to that? What is it? Yeah, so we'll square that. And oxygen is by itself. And then SO3. And we'll square that as well. And we don't know what that value is equal to yet. We'll figure it out later. Okay, so that's part A. Part B asks, what is the concentration, that's what the brackets mean here on the question, what is the concentration of SO3 at equilibrium? So what is the concentration of SO3 at equilibrium? Can anybody tell me? It started at one molar, and then it finished at what? 0.4. Yeah, that's all the question's asking. So... Formularity, and that's at equilibrium. Okay. So far, the testing, the question's pretty tough, right? What? All right. Part C. Determine the equilibrium concentrations of SO2 and O2. Um, so we want to figure that out. Now, even though we have our information for SO3, we don't know anything about the SO2 and O2, or do we? Do we know anything about SO2 or O2? Like initially, do we know how much we have? No, so it's safe to say we have zero. So let's make an ice chart, kind of organize our thoughts here. Go ahead, think out loud. Okay, well, let's do an ice chart just to see. So we have our SO3 turns into SO2 and oxygen, right? We know we started initially for the SO3 at one molar, correct? And we weren't given any information about SO2 or O2, so let's just say that we have none, zero. All right, now, 
based on our change, how did SO3 change? Did it change by a factor of x, 2x, 3x? How do we know it's 2x? Coefficient of 2, very good. So we know, oh actually let me ask, here I'll put the 2x here first. Is that a positive value or a negative value? Negative y. Why? Why is it moving to the right? Very good. So we're not at equilibrium, so the reaction must shift to the right. So on this side, the reactant side, it's going to be reduced. And then on the product side, it'll be increased, right? And then the oxygen will be plus X. Now, let me ask you this. Based on the information that we have here from part B, we started at 1 molar and we went to 0.4 molar. Do we know what that change is? If you start at 1 molar and then it goes to 0.4 molar, and this is for the SO3, how much did that change? 0.6. And was that an increase in 0.6 or a decrease? Decrease. decrease. So we can say that negative 2x is equal to a negative 0.6. Would everybody agree with that? In other words, we started at 1 molar, it went to 0.4, so that was a reduction. Now, if you wanted to do the math, you could do 0.4 minus 1 to get that. Okay. So, is it possible for us to find out what x is equal to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew I'd get a calculator for this. But, negative 2x is equal to a negative 0.6. Well, negative x is equal to a negative 0.3. So, x is equal to 0.3. These are all molarities. Okay? So if we know what X is equal to, we can find out what SO2 is equal to. So what does SO2 change by? 0.6, because it's 0.3 times 2. And X changes by the 0.3. And these are positive values as well. Okay? You don't need those units in there. So at equilibrium, 1 minus the 0.6 gives us 0.4. And then 0 plus the 0.6 gives us 0.6. And 0 plus the 0.3 gives us 0.3. Okay, so there's our concentrations at equilibrium. We knew that based on B. So to answer part C, um, SO2 is equal to 0.6 and O2 is equal to 0.3. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, these guys we didn't have any to start with, and this is how much we had at equilibrium. Okay. Now I'm going to erase that because I need to do part D here. Everybody good? No, everybody's not. Are you okay, Daniel? Yeah, good, good. All right. So now we have our our ice chart, and hopefully you can see that on your paper or back up the video. Uh, let's see, part D. It says, on the graph, make a sketch that shows how the concentrations of SO2 and O2 change as a function of time. All right, so we'll go back to our chart. Now, again, you already put this dot on there, so I'll put it back. So we have that, that bold point for our SO3 because that tells everybody that the system's at equilibrium. And if you see something like this on the AP exam or on the test, I would highly recommend that you do that. That way there's no confusion as to when equilibrium is established. All right, so SO2 and O2, how much do we start with? How much O2 and SO2 do we start with? Zero. So we'll put a point there as well. And then the SO2 at equilibrium was 0.6. So again, everything hits equilibrium at the same time. So we can put our point there at 0.6 and with the neatest straight hand that you can get label that there's our equilibrium for the SO2 
and oxygen is 0.3, so we have 0.2 and 0.4, so 0.3 is right there. Do your straight line again, and label oxygen. All right, so there's our points from equilibrium on. Now we need to show how it changes as a function of time. So with your best curve, okay, connect the dots. Okay, not a straight line, but okay, we don't want to have a straight line because it gradually decelerates as we get to equilibrium. And one nice thing, these bold points there's no question as to where we start and where we end. Okay, so if somebody's going to argue about, well, they don't know where their equilibrium was established, well, it's right here. It's all at the same point in time when equilibrium is established. Okay. And make sure that you do label each of these. And sometimes they might even be on the same concentration, so you may have to label additional ones right next to each other. Questions on that one? Isn't that fun? <laughs> Super fun. All right, let's look at the back side. I'm not supposed to have that much fun. <clears throat> All right, number, or actually part E. Part E says, calculate the value of the following equilibrium constants for a reaction of 300. So Kc, what does Kc represent again? Concentrations. concentrations, good. So our Kc, again, will be our concentration of our products over our reactants. So SO2 and O2 and SO3. And it's the concentrations at what point in time? At equilibrium, so that's what the K represents. So you know you're at equilibrium. Q is if you're not sure if you're at equilibrium, but we're at equilibrium. So from the previous side, SO2 had a concentration of 0.6 molar. We want to square that. Oxygen had a concentration of 0.3 molar. And SO3 had a concentration of, was that 0.4? And that was squared. What's our unit going to be for this? Molarity? Okay. I agree with that. So when we finish, should be molarity or mole per liter. Probably not a bad idea to get it to that since we're doing a KP right afterward. All right, so. I get 0.675. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's our our KC. Okay. KP. How do we do KP? That big old long thing. Where, where could you find that if you're not 100% sure? Your equation sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the equation says something like KP is equal to KC RT delta N. Good, okay. And again, don't try to memorize those. Those are You have the access to those. So let's do delta N first. So how many products do we have? And you'll have to look at your balanced equation. How many products? How many gas products do we have? How many? Three, because we had two SO2s and one oxygen, so we have three. And how many reactant? Two. two. Good. So it's how many moles of gas product minus moles of gas reactant. So this gives us a plus one, right? Well, that stinks. This is too easy now. Um, and I will say from the quiz, some of you 
had some difficulty rearranging these. Some of you left the exponent negative, which gave you a really goofy unit. Just be careful with that. I know that I show a lot of steps and a lot of work, and I may have even on your quizzes showed you how to rearrange it. Be careful with the units, and the units usually will tell you if you're doing things right or not. All right, so KC, we have six or 0.675, and I'm not going to write molarity, but I'm going to write mole per liter because I want those units to cancel out. What if, and sidebar here, what if delta N were zero? What would that do to this? The RT, what would that do to it? The numbers and the units would equal one. So if that were a, a zero, KP would be equal to KC. And that's thing. So what would the unit be for KC if our delta N was zero? The unit, what would the unit be? See if you guys can get this concept. It is a concept. Still be molarity? In other words, if I had, hypothetically speaking, I had three moles of this gas on the reactant side, three moles of gas on the product side, what would my units be? They'd be gone. That's why Kp could be equal to Kc when you don't have a value there. Okay, so no unit. Because usually your Kc is in moles per liter or molarity, and these are in atmospheres. Yeah, actually. Do they use this negative? If this were negative, I would make sure that my RT were placed on the bottom. I would write it like this to make it a positive value. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of having negative exponents there. And it will help keep you from making the silly mistake with the units. All right. So let's see, RT, so the 0 0.0821, that's per liter per mole Kelvin. And what was the temperature again? 300. Thir thank you. 300 Kelvin. That's all of the first. So let's cancel out units here. Kelvin, liters, and moles. So we're left with atmosphere. Anybody get a number for that? 16 what? Okay. 